All right, Eric, we thank you. UConn getting out to that great start tonight. 17-0 run to begin the game and then starting the second half on a 14-0 run. So they came out firing on all cylinders. I think you sensed a little bit more aggressiveness from the Huskies tonight, something we spoke about on the pregame show, something Gino has stressed to his team that needs to happen for them to be a contender this year. Uh, Katie Lou Samuelson, the senior, stepping up. Very big way, a double-double, 23 and 10. She shot the ball very well. What did you see from Katie Lou? I, I saw great shooters keep shooting. Yeah. She, in the very beginning of the game, she took a couple that didn't go down, but great shooters keep shooting, and that's what Katie Lou Samuelson has to do, and she continues to do. You're awesome, Katie Lou. We want the ball in your hands, and the confidence that that takes, that shows that senior leadership, just keep knocking down shots. She's got a great stroke. They get her the ball at the right place at the right time. I don't know whose scouting report doesn't have Katie Lou Samuelson on it, that she can shoot a three-point shot, but some of these teams don't get out to her. I'd be covering her. More than anyone else. I, I would think so. <laughs> what, what, what about the way she's changed as a player a little bit? Uh, first three seasons at Connecticut, one double-double. She's yeah. got five already this year after tonight. I, noticeably, her rebounding this season has been phenomenal. You've seen some great when she's in there amongst three people, and you go, wow, Katie Lou Samuelson gets in there. She's active on the boards. And these are things we didn't see in her younger years. And you've seen her develop more as a physical player, get in there for rebounds, do things other than shooting. Katie Lou Samuelson is an all-around player now. She's developed her game to be not just a shooter, but a basketball player. UConn shared the basketball ball beautifully in tonight's game 26 assists yeah. on 31 made baskets and at the forefront of that was the the point guard crystal dangerfield she had 10 assists which tied her career high and the variety of ways that she distributes the basketball was on full display well and it's so fun to watch yes Gary. it is and she knows her teammates so well she hits them at the right place immediately eyes are up she's getting the ball in transition uconn needed a good game where they defense led to often offense and they had great transition because the floor just General Crystal Dangerfield sees things, gets that ball up the floor in the right hand. The extra pass, which UConn is known for, was on display in full effect tonight. You mentioned eyes up, right, when yeah. that break is, is going on. We sort of take that for granted that a point guard, that's what a point guard should do. Yeah. But not all point guards do that. Is, is that a fair statement? It is a fair statement. And now that I coach fifth and sixth grade basketball, <laughs> I try to tell them immediately, look up the floor. I'm going to tell my kids, watch Crystal Dangerfield, because she sees, and, and you know what I like? the little fakes in the dishes so she sees her teammates but she's also thinking ahead of how can she kind of fake and, and make the natural pass but ah oh, she's so fun to watch and I think she's gotten in better shape not that Crystal Dangerfield was never not in shape but you know I mean she just looks phenomenal on point everything she's doing she looked great tonight 11 points 10 assists for Crystal Dangerfield let's get a look right now game stats they are presented by Town Fair Tire UConn in control from the beginning they shot 47 percent in the game they held Cincinnati to 29 nine percent shooting and so the defense was there that was huge they forced 20 turnovers in the game and route to their 13th win of the year they're 13 and one on the season now as we head back stores welcome in eric freed meg colmo they join us from courtside once again after uh, completing the call of of tonight's game and uh, guys good to be back with you and you know we spoke on our pregame show about the need for this team to get easy baskets right to get out in transition to run and we saw more of that tonight 25 points off turnovers and 15 fast breaks points how, how do you assess the way they did that tonight and how must that change as they move forward just the feeling we had from the beginning is they were swarming defensively you know they came right out in front of us here in the opening seconds there was a trap a turnover turnovers on the first i think four possessions mm -hmm. for cincinnati a 17 nothing run it starts with that and as gary just touched on this team has been so good through the years of scoring in transition and just getting points off that defense and that was the feeling from the start here tonight oh there's no question about it and they are so good turning defense into offense and it really kept cincinnati on their heels the entire game cincinnati was never able to get any kind of flow going offensively and uconn's confidence because of how well they started they they had a swagger to them the entire game and, and that's the kind of energy that Gina wants to see. Just like the swagger Kara coaches her grade school Absolutely. players on. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's Kara level that's swagger point. right there. <laughs> oh, guys, it's so good to be back with you. We're very excited. We, we missed you guys so much. Yes. We missed you guys. <laughs> well, 
obviously we noticed the transition, but something else I noticed, Meg, was the post play tonight. I felt like people did work before the ball got in there. Great positioning and footwork, and they seem to look to get the ball inside more tonight. They did, and I like their timing a little bit, although I have to say, Kara, there was one or two times, and I mentioned it once, Kyla Irwin was wide open, and I think I even said she was open for about a week, <laughs> and they finally tried to get it into her a little bit late, but I agree, you know, they've got to get the ball into the post, and, and to your point, they're... The post players did such a good job of getting the footwork, getting position, and they've got to continue to work on just dumping the ball into the post. For Don't sure. all post players just by default say, hey, why didn't you give me the ball? I was open a week, even if it was half a second. Isn't that the default position for post players? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. No offense, Kara, but... Uh, 32 points in the paint tonight, so that, you know, that goes to Kara's point. They tried to work it inside, and... Um, you know, just, again, good balance scoring. And uh, Megan Walker, as Gino mentioned mm -hmm. to Justine on his way off the court, you know, you got that sense. She was carrying herself a little differently mm -hmm. here tonight. You noticed her a little bit more. Yeah. She didn't disappear like she has in some games. So that's a big encouraging sign going sure. forward. And, and he telling Justine that they, he wants to get her in the lane to open up some things for the outside. And I think that's going to bode well because if you think back to that Baylor game, they didn't get the ball inside at all. So I think it's it's got to be a focus. And if it's if it can't be a post player, well, then get Megan Walker in there, a big guard. Sure. Get her in there and get productivity. Well, that, that certainly does make sense. Uh, before we wrap it up, guys, this might be a little bit too much of an inside joke, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Our next game here on SNY <laughs> is down in New Orleans against Tulane next week. I just want to say... Um, <laughs> Plan accordingly. I we're know we had. Some, we're leaving now, yes. Gary. Okay? There, there was we some trouble going from stores to New Orleans. <laughs> so if we can't get there in seven days, shame on us. Yeah. It's not Mardi Gras. We already researched it. It's not Mardi Gras. There's no NBA To be game. fair to Meg, she was there in time. Justine and I were the ones who got there late. And I do believe, Gary, you were ready to call the game from, <laughs> from the studio. Yes, so, we, we were. Yeah. So it just that, pointing that, that out. New Orleans always brings back fond memories. Yes, don't worry. All right, guys. I've, I've got my bag packed, and I'm heading down there now. So we'll talk to you next Wednesday. Great to visit with you guys, Eric and Meg, joining us from uh, Stores, too, Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as we bring it back inside here, Studio 31, uh, uh, Nafisa Collier, I, I want to go to the post because you mentioned it and they mentioned it right there. Uh, she had a strong game, right? Yeah. Uh, but does yeah. she play away from the basket too much? Do they need to get her? Who am I to tell the Hall of Famer how to run his offense? Uh, yeah, but, me too. But, <laughs> with, but, but with this team, Kara, right, the yeah. lack of a post presence, yeah. must they get her down onto the low block a little bit more? Well, I understand his kind of uh, five-out mentality of these players are not your typical back-to-the-basket-all-the-time players. She's capable of facing up, has the shot, that sort of thing. So I understand how they can go there all the time. However, I think if Nafisa goes inside a little more, it's going to open things up on the outside. So people forget, like, I, I, I just because just I'm a post player doesn't mean I want the ball all the time. I'm a firm believer if you run things through the post, it opens things up on the outside. So it would be nice to see Nafisa post up a little more. She's just so athletic and fluid, and you know she she can face up and do things, but now put your back to the basket and make, you know, people commit to you and open up other things. And she's so good. She's patient with the up and under and the moves that she's capable of doing good things in there. And what about what uh, Eric and Meg were talking about right there, playing off what Gino said in his interview with Justine at the end of the game? They're, they're going to use Megan Walker now, right? Yeah. He really liked what he saw out of Megan Walker tonight, but might move her down a little bit more inside and using a big guard in that yeah. situation. In what way can that pay dividends? Well, she is. She's a big guard, and she's very uh, versatile. And the fact that Gino said that about her after the game is huge for her and her confidence. But she's big, and she's able to go post up smaller guards. She can play inside, outside. They want to free Lou up. I mean, there's so many things that can happen when Megan Walker plays well. And that's going to be someone, obviously, she's a, a starter, but we haven't seen enough consistency from her. And if she can really have games like tonight and become more consistent, that's going to be a huge factor for UConn. Is track. she an X factor here? Because let's not forget, when she came out of high school, she was the number one rated player yeah. in America. This is somebody who's been counted upon to be the next great player at UConn. The transition a season ago was a difficult one, mm -hmm. as it can be for players, even that highly regarded coming out of high school and then moving to the big time, big time college basketball, and especially Connecticut. But can she be? 
the X factor here for UConn. I think she could, and, and the choice is hers. You know, I think Gino, the problem struggled with her early on of not getting it and not getting the system and the culture. And sometimes it's hard. You can be the best player in the country, but if you don't get it, how to play in a system, then you're going to sit the bench no, no matter how good you are. But I think she's starting to get it now. And, and at this point, He's going to need her to step up, and she could be huge if the team has confidence in her and she plays to her ability. All right, so just getting going here, People's United Bank Post Game Show still to come. We're going to hear from the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema. We'll hear from Katie Lou Samuelson, plus have complete game highlights as UConn gets the win over Cincinnati, 82-38. to Before we head for break, we get a look right now at tonight's rebounding leaders. It is Lighting Up the Boards, presented by Connecticut Lighting Centers. Katie Lou led the way. She was in double figures with 10. Nafisa Collier had nine, and Megan Walker had those eight rebounds to go along with her eight points. We're coming back from New York City in just a moment. Apple back alongside Kara Walters. Look who was in the house tonight in store. Sue Bird. Sue Bird with that big smile on her face. Yeah, I love it. Taking in the, all the action early on. UConn out quickly. Katie's uh, Lou Samuelson going to get it to Kristen Williams, the freshman. She had a really strong first half layup and the foul. Huskies keep the pressure on, forcing another steal. It's Dangerfield to Collier for the layup. And UConn came out just like a well oiled machine. They sure did. Transition points were really important to them, and they got it done early. Kristen Williams from the left wing she plays with great confidence. I love it the three the three ball for for her will be huge for the Huskies another steal for UConn and again Williams in the art here of the mid-range jump shot mid-range jumper I think it's a lost art in women's basketball and <laughs> yes. Kristen Williams as a freshman makes it look easy UConn led 17 to nothing and then Williams doing it again she had 17 points in the first half still in that first quarter it's another forced turnover by UConn and again transition offense by the Huskies well to me that's UConn basketball Crystal Day Dangerfield hustling from keeping the ball out of bounds. Boom, boom, touches everyone's hands with a good finish. UConn led 30-8 to eight after the first quarter. In the second quarter, Katie Lou Samuelson getting into the act. The three wide open, lets it fly, and nothing but nylon. Time winding down in the quarter. Dangerfield inside to Collier for the layup. And look at the way she sees the floor and breaks down a defense. Oh, so well. And Nafisa Collier gets position early and just unselfish basketball. UConn up by 30 at the break. 49-19 to 19 in the third. Katie Lou coming out and a great confidence on that jump shot. Cincinnati scouting report. Katie Lou Samuelson can shoot the three. Might want to find her, right? I mean, she's <laughs> one of the best shooters in the country. She had a game high 23 points and then more defense turning into offense. And here's Megan Walker and Gino pointed her out and, and really specified the way he liked the way she played tonight. She played big, a huge block, and she also had eight rebounds. So she played bigger than she is. You kind of opening the second half out of 14-0 run, then the quarter winding down danger field letting it fly from three he had a she had a big game 11 and 10 assists a double double as Gino Oriema's team gets the win by a final of 82 to 38 tonight over the Cincinnati Bearcats UConn going to 13 and one on the season back-to-back -back wins now over Houston and Cincinnati after that defeat against Baylor last Thursday here's Justine Ward she spent some time with Katie Lou Samuelson when it was over <laughs> Katie Lou, you guys scored 25 points off turnovers tonight. Where did the defensive intensity come from? Um, you know, we kind of wanted to establish ourselves with a new identity and kind of bring out uh, more of the old UConn basketball. And I think we could feel it. And especially in that third quarter, I think we all really felt it. So, um, you know, we want to move forward in here and be aggressive and do as much as we can defensively because we are so good in transition and we have so many people that can score. Created a lot of offensive opportunities. How did you feel the offense flowed tonight? Really Really good. I think we got a lot of good shots, and I think we were make, doing a pretty good, good job making the extra pass. So um, as long as we can continue to do that, I feel pretty, pretty confident in us. You were pretty vocal in this game. What kinds of things were you directing some of your teammates? Um, just offensively, defensively, and most importantly, getting hyped and having fun. I think that's the biggest thing that can bring a team together, and um, I feel like that's been lacking for what I normally do this year. So I'm trying to bring that energy every single game. Obviously, you guys won against Houston. You get this win here tonight. What do you guys look to? accomplish as things continue to move forward uh, make progress every day each day we want to build on something and hopefully get better all right katie lou samuelson 23 points 10 rebounds on the night for the senior back to you
All right, Justine, we thank you. And as we spoke about at the outset of this broadcast, the senior, the veteran, yeah. stepping up big time. And a great example for the younger players, and that includes Kristen Williams, who continues to impress us yeah. and, and, and yeah. impress the head coach as well. She came out very strong. She had a big first half. She finished the game with 19 points. She shot it well, a 7 of 13 shooting. And her ability to create for herself, I think, is one of the things that's most impressive. Yeah, she creates for herself, and she has the green light and the confidence of her teammates to just shoot it. You're a freshman, but you can create on your own, so do it. So she breaks it down. She's got good handle, good cross. Over. She has the confidence from three-point land. She shares the basketball. She goes strong to the bucket. Um, she has just so many opportunities to score because she's just so versatile in every way. And she's a strong guard. And I'm going to say it all season long, Gary, but I love her mid-range jumper. Yep. It really, it, it, the fact that she adds that to everything, I mean, it sounds silly because you think, Everyone has a mid-range jumper, but if you really watch basketball closely, there's not a lot of good mid people want to shoot threes or they want to drive to the basket. But that mid-range is kind of a lost art, and I really like the way she shoots it with confidence. The game has changed, right? It's it's Absolutely. become in many ways positionless basketball yes. that yes. does not lead to what you're talking about there. That mid-range game, uh, UConn, and I think we saw it on a number of occasions with with Kristen Williams, the extra pass, right? Yes. She made three threes in the game, uh, getting into the teeth of the, de the defense, which is what Crystal Dangerfield does so well and then spotting the open player and you can really share the basketball oh. uh, looking at 26 assists on 31 made baskets yeah. I mean that's that's pretty remarkable yeah it is remarkable but it's also so fun to watch it Gary. Is. they're not just like passes they're really fun good passes but the spacing that all starts with their spacing I mean UConn really they have people all over the court spread out makes it hard for the defense to guard and they move the defense I mean that's what you have to do is move the defense and make them work and UConn boy very unselfish they don't care who scores they really don't care who scores and it's fun to watch good passing is fun to watch and I think it's a little underrated but everybody's capable of scoring so why not make that extra pass? Well, 11 national championships for a guy by the name of Gino Oriema. Yeah. You were a part of the first one, right? Have you seen their offense change over the years, or are the fundamentals uh, pretty much the same as they were when you were playing? Well, I, like you referenced before, it's more position lists right. you know yes. when I played it was get your big butt back to the basket posting up and the, so that kind of is a dinosaur of a thing uh, now it's just anybody can play any position five out rotate be versatile so that has changed but what hasn't changed is Gino's expectations so if you are gonna go in the post you're gonna post up a certain way you're gonna demand the basketball it's gonna be your footwork it's gonna be your positioning so although things have changed things haven't changed Gino expects people to do a certain thing a certain way and if you can't at the spot that you're in there you're coming out we've got more to come here on the people's united bank post game show going to hear from the hall of famer himself gino orieva on the other side of a break uconn shot it well tonight just under 50 percent for the game 47 percent to be exact they get the win over cincinnati 82 to 38 we'll hear from that guy in a moment Time now for the drive of the game. It is presented by Subaru. Early on, UConn forcing the turnover and then Crystal Dangerfield bring it up the floor and then spotting Nafisa Collier who finishes off the break as we watch it one more time. It is our drive of the game. It is presented by Subaru. A big part of this 82-38 UConn win over Cincinnati as the Bearcats had their four-game winning streak snapped by the Huskies tonight. Let's hear from the head coach right now, Gino Oriama, his post-game address to the media. Do you know what you like about being at home and how comfortable your players looked, um, you know, throughout the game? It, it was, um, you know, it was about time. Obviously, I mean, it's been a, it's been a long time, and um, I thought we came out with a tremendous amount of energy. You know, we we made a couple adjustments the last couple of days um, defensively, and and I think it paid off. Um, we had a, um, a really, really, really good first quarter. Not just the scoring wise, but just in our, you know, our attention to this is what we want to do, this is how we want to do it, and they really, they really did a great job with that. We really paid attention to that and played with a ton of energy, and it was great. It was great, and you know. It's, you know, I don't know how many points she scored, but this may have been one of Megan Walker's best games since she's been at Connecticut. 
and if we can continue to get that every game, I think we're going to be we're going to be on our way. When you kind of map things out with the offense and in terms of ball movement and shooting, is that kind of what you hope to see? Well, it's funny how that works. I mean, you know, if 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 defensively you can create some opportunities for yourself. Um, you know, I think it shows on the other end. Um, the, the the big thing is you you really have to work hard to create those opportunities. You know, and uh, I, I think we were more aggressive defensively tonight than we have been in a while. Uh, and because the ball went in the basket, it allowed us to to set up some things that we wanted to work on. And um, you know, I. I we did a lot of really good things tonight, and our defense started it all. Do you know? Did, did you? Were you really happy with the way Kristen played early on, really aggressively attacking, and and then did that kind of fade in the second half for her? I mean, Kristen's going to be, um, you know, a typical freshman. Um, she's going to have great spurts, and she's going to have spurts where she's um you know uh, a freshman who's not sure and tentative so i think the uh the important thing is that um there wasn't any any hesitation um at all in uh in in that whole first half when she got the ball she was pretty decisive with what she wanted to do and to me, that's always the first step in, in having some kind of success is be decisive. You know, she's been a little bit indecisive, you know, the last couple of games. Gina, can you talk about what you want to get from the bench during this uh, regular season in the conference? Um, obviously, they're going to they're going to play a little more than they did against some of the top teams in the country. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I've been struggling a little bit trying to figure out where where to go with that. Um, it, we're kind of in a little bit of a conundrum, so to speak. Um, we have guys that need to play, and um, I know that. And when they play, they don't play the way I expect them to play. And then if I keep playing them, they think that playing like that is okay. And then if I don't play them, then I'm not giving them an opportunity to get better. It's a fine line that I'm trying to, oops, that I'm trying to figure out. Um, obviously, if we have too many of those guys on the court at the same time, it's not going to look very good. So we have to space it out and... The bottom line is right now it's going to be, you know, our five starters and then kind of mix and match off the bench, one or two guys, spot them in there, and hopefully we can get some crucial minutes from them. I thought Kyla gave us some great minutes in the first half, you know. Um, so if we can get more of that uh, on a regular basis, I think that will help us. I don't know that they're ever going to score a lot of points, but we really don't need them to score a lot of points. But we need them to do some other things. And it doesn't matter if they don't help our team when they come in the game. We just need to get them to the point where they have to understand you can't hurt us. And that's the focus a little bit at a time. And I thought we were better in the second half than we were in the first half. It's going to be one of the big ongoing stories, right, for this yeah. UConn team, the bench and what they can give, Gino. And as he said right there, they don't have to give us that much offensively. Just don't hurt us, right, when, right. when you're out there on the court. Right, right. That's that's the way it is. Like, keep the momentum, keep everything going. Just no, you know, slides in the in the game, no 
no making any negative impact and you'll be okay. But I thought, you know, to his point as well, Kyla Irwin played great minutes. I mean, that girl works so hard in practice. She is all over. You have to give her kudos for being one of the hardest working kids. She just, she doesn't have the quickness or the athleticism, but man, she works her butt off and she really contributed. Just slow and steady. Don't need to go outside the box. Don't need you to score a lot of points. She had three assists on the night. She rebounds the basketball. Actually, if you watch her, she really boxes out well. So even if she doesn't get the rebound, other people do. Do, do the little things and do them well. Don't go out of your comfort zone, and that's all he needs from the bench. Two other things Gino hit on right there. Defensively, he really liked what he saw. They thought they were more aggressive defensively tonight. They yeah. forced 20 turnovers in the game. And right when, when you start on the defensive end, a lot of times your offense just flows off of that. It did. And and I think you saw it from the tip, Gary. You could feel the energy and the difference. Like they were making a concerted effort to let our defense lead to offense. And you could feel it. You could see it. They're in passing lanes. They're talking. Um, oftentimes they do almost like a press, like a one-two-two. And you saw Crystal in the back and the bigs in the front. So he has the bigs with the capability and the athleticism to trap so when they're athletic and big and they trap you can't get out of that trap so oftentimes they they did that they're working on that they're kind of testing the waters of a lot of different things and a lot of different people and i gotta tell you the way they played defense tonight was like traditional UConn yes. basketball, the way they like to do things. And hopefully it will continue going forward. But like Gino said, we got to get other people into the mix and we're going to work on our things. And that's what conference play is about. There's no keys to the game anymore. Um, in my opinion, it's goals for Connecticut. So they're going to put goals on the board and can they challenge themselves and get better by March? They have their defense down and everyone contributing is the goal. And as Gino said again in his post game address to the media right there, we're talking about Megan Walker and he hit on it specifically, yeah. right? With just after the game he said uh, if we can continue to get that from Megan then we're going to be on our way so yeah, I think he that's looks big. that's huge that's right big. because she's been in the doghouse a little bit over her first <laughs> year she has. At, at UConn so for her to single yeah. be singled out by Gino tonight you're right I think that's really important she hopefully she hears that or sees that because that's a huge confidence boost when Gino believes in you there's nothing like that and hopefully she'll grow from here and like he said we'll be on our way so that's big praise and shows you how important she is to this program all right so when we come back here going to take a look at what lies ahead for the huskies as they get the win tonight third uh let's see what was the final tonight 82 to 38 as they go to 13 and one on the season we'll have the sights and the sounds of tonight's victory when we come back in a moment the yukon women's basketball postgame show is presented by people's united bank See what Know How can do for you. It is time now for a look at UConn's upcoming schedule. It's presented by People's United Bank. The Huskies going to host South Florida on Sunday. Kara's coaching debut, right? Yes. Your kids are going to be playing at halftime? Yep. Then yep. they hit the road, go to take on Tulane and Temple, and then it's back to Gamble on the 23rd, going to host SMU, followed by UCF at the Excel Center on the 27th. The next UConn game here on SNY going to be a week from tonight. The Huskies down in the Big Easy going to take on Tulane in New Orleans. Coverage getting underway, 7.30. Kara and myself get Getting you set for all the action with the UConn women's basketball pregame show right here on SNY. And so that is going to wrap up our coverage of UConn basketball on this night. Again, Huskies get the win 82 to 38. So good to be back yes. alongside you, Kat. It's you been too. way too long. Way too long. I'm ready here. Get we are rolling. ready. Yes, indeed. 13 and 1 on the season. Now, the Gino Oriema show is coming up in just a matter of mere moments. But first, as we head out the door, the sights and the sounds of UConn's win tonight over Cincinnati. So long. Turnover right at midcourt. It's Crystal Dangerfield who waits and finishes. Williams off another turnover. Dangerfield. Little <laughs> ball fake. Finding Irwin for the layup. Samuelson beats the shot clock. Dangerfield, of course. Samuelson's three. She's got the range now. Goings rejected by Walker. Dangerfield. For three. Oh, UConn all the time.